The next type of structure we're going to draw pictures for is something called a polyatomic ion. If we kind of break down this term, polyatomic ion, poly means many, atoms, and then an ion is something with a charge. So it's a group of bonded atoms that have a charge. They're made up of nonmetals only, so they bond covalently. It's very confusing because you're talking about an ion, something with a charge, but the things that we're gonna be bonding together in these pictures are made up of nonmetal elements only, and nonmetals bond covalently. So when we go to draw these structures, they're gonna look more like these with the lines in between the atoms then they are gonna look like these where they have um, the no lines, right? No line bonds. Um, where it will look kinda a little bit, a little bit like both. You'll see, you'll see as we do these, okay? Um, uh, most polyatomic ions are gonna be anions. So those are gonna be the ones we're gonna focus on. Um, if you have an anion negatively charged, how do you know which atom in the structure to give that extra electron to? Well, you're going to give it to the element with the higher electronegativity because it would be able to attract that extra electron better than the other element, right? So in this example that we're going to do down below here where it's S H minus. If you don't see a number next to the minus, that means it's a minus one. So let's look up uh, the electronegativity values for S and H, and then we're going to decide who's going to get that extra electron. If it's S H minus one, that means we've got an extra electron in our picture somewhere. So who's going to get it? If I look at my electronegativity value chart from before, uh, right here, and we compare sulfur, 2.5, to hydrogen, 2.1, sulfur can attract electrons better than hydrogen can. So in my picture, sulfur is going to be the winner. So let's see what that does. I'm going to write this down. So sulfur was 2.5. Hydrogen was 2.1. So that means when we go to draw our picture, S is going to get the extra electron in that SH minus. Let's try it. So sulfur, what we're going to do is first pretend like it was SH neutral. So we would draw S next to H. Sulfur is in the 6A family, so he's going to get six valence electrons. Hydrogen's in the 1A family, so he's going to get one electron. If we had just SH neutral, these guys would bond, and hydrogen would be okay because it would have two electrons next to it. But sulfur would not be satisfied with that because he would have two, four, six, seven. He's got that lonely dot over there on the side, right? So sulfur is short an electron. SH neutral would not exist for that reason. It's not stable. It doesn't have the right number of electrons. But SH with a minus one charge does exist. And we decided up here that sulfur was gonna be the element that's gonna get this extra electron, the minus one, is gonna go onto the sulfur because it can attract it better. So I'm going to add an extra dot to my sulfur and I'm just gonna put it in a different color to make it obvious that it wasn't an original sulfur electron. You know how when we drew ionic structures before, we put them in brackets with a charge? We have to do that here as well because we don't just have SH neutral, we have SH minus. So this is an example of a polyatomic ion. Polyatomic, many atoms, ion with a charge. 
we draw the structure, the picture is gonna look like a covalent sharing of electrons because hydrogen and sulfur are both nonmetals. But we're taking this nonmetal combination and giving it a charge. So that's why it's an ion. It's, it's kind of confusing <laughs> to have uh, ions bonded covalently.